Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the uninvited guest. This week we will examine the first of two stories of women who anointed Jesus with costly perfume. The first took place in Galilee and the second took place in Bethany near Jerusalem shortly before Jesus was crucified. Luke tells us that after Jesus raised the widow's son in the village of Nain, that one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and Jesus went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table, Luke chapter 7 and verse 36. The Pharisees were the religious elite in Israel. During the days of Jesus, there were approximately 7,000 men who attained the title of Pharisee. To earn this title, they were required to have the Old Testament and the oral traditions of the sages memorized. Pharisees were required to follow strict ceremonial laws. As far as we know, this is the only Pharisee who invited Jesus into his home for a meal. The special meal was interrupted by the entrance of an uninvited guest. Luke says, And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, learned that Jesus had reclined at the table in the Pharisee's home. Luke chapter 7 and verse 37. Luke makes it clear the lady was a woman of the city with a very bad reputation. The nearest city to the village of Nain is Beit Shean, a place well known for its brothel and pagan practices. Jesus was most likely referring to the main street of Beit Shean when he made this statement, broad is the road that leads to destruction. A woman like this lady would have no problem walking into a room where only men were present. But this time, her intentions were not impure, but pure. She carried in her hand an alabaster flask, and the cost of the alabaster flask was exceeded by the more costly spikenard ointment it contained. The best spikenard is grown along the banks of the Ganges River in India and in Tibet and in Nepal. The gift in her hand was costly, sacrificial, and surprising. Luke says, She brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind Jesus at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Luke chapter 7 and verse 38. As one who has had my feet washed in India, I can tell you that it is a beautiful but very uncomfortable experience. It feels like you're being worshipped, even though you know that you are not. Jesus, however, was being worshipped by this lady who understood who he was. Some people kiss statues or stones, but this lady kissed the feet of God in the person of Jesus. Some kiss a lifeless object, but she kissed the living, loving Son of God. Her brokenness was evident by her tears that wet the feet of Jesus. She expressed her love by using her hair to wash the dirt off of Jesus' feet. Her generosity was demonstrated by the fragrance she poured out on the feet of Jesus. Her humility unsettled the Pharisee who had invited Jesus into his home. Luke says, And when the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. 
Luke chapter 7 and verse 39. The Pharisee had no problem identifying the sins of others, but they were unable to see their own sins. As we have seen so many times, Jesus distinguished himself from all other prophets or religious leaders by allowing known sinners to touch him. No matter what you have done, you can reach out and touch Jesus. He will not turn you away. Jesus saw what was in the heart of the sinful woman, and he accepted her. He also read the mind of the self-righteous Pharisee, who was disgusted by the intrusion of a sinner into his home. As we have seen so many times, Jesus has a way of asking questions that reveal the heart of his critics. Jesus said, Simon, I have something to say to you. Not realizing that Jesus knew exactly what he was thinking, Simon said to the teacher, say it. Luke chapter 7 and verse 40. Simon would not have invited Jesus to say whatever he wanted if he anticipated what Jesus was about to ask him. Luke says, a certain money lender had two debtors. And one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Luke chapter 7, verse 41 and 42. Now Simon realizes he has been outwitted by Jesus and his heart has been exposed. And Jesus asked the obvious question that Simon does not want to answer. Jesus said, which of them will love him more? Luke chapter 7 and verse 42. Now Simon reluctantly replies, the one, I suppose, for whom he canceled the larger debt. And Jesus said to him, you have judged rightly. Luke chapter 7 and verse 43. Then turning towards the woman, Jesus said to Simon, Do you see this woman? Pharisees never made eye contact with anyone whom they thought were sinners. Jesus makes eye contact with everyone he talked to. Jesus is ready to make eye contact with you. And Jesus said to Simon, I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. Luke chapter 7 and verse 44. You gave me no kisses, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. And Jesus said to the woman, Go, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Luke chapter 7 and verse 50. Once again, we discover that Jesus has the power to forgive sin. We heard him forgive the paralyzed man for his sin. We heard him forgive the woman caught in adultery. Jesus has the power to forgive your sin as well. If you are willing to admit you are a sinner, Jesus is willing to forgive you. Jesus has authority from God to forgive sin because he is the one who paid the penalty for our sin by dying for us in our place on the cross. In this story, we learn how to be forgiven. We must come to him with tears, understanding and admitting how sinful we are. The sins of the city of the woman were obvious to all, but the sins of the Pharisees were concealed from everyone but Jesus. Our sins are never hidden from God. If we are honest with God, and come to him with our sins, 
He will forgive us and bring the same peace into our lives that he brought into the life of this lady. Do something costly, sacrificial, and surprising. Give Jesus your heart and mind and soul. Like the woman in this story, you can know that you are at peace with God. Thank Jesus for dying for you in your place so you can have eternal life. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me take a few moments and pray for you. No doubt this lady was caught in prostitution. And maybe you've been caught in prostitution either willingly or you have been forced into prostitution by some set of circumstances that you found yourself in. It's not too late for you to find mercy from God and come to him and to be forgiven and to be set free from the sins that are binding you. Perhaps you're caught in addictions, opioids and other drugs that have just taken over your life and caused you to rob and steal and maybe even kill and just do anything you can to get your next fix. God knows where you are and what you're facing. Jesus has power. I break the power of that addiction off of your life right now. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life to touch you. Maybe you're involved in alcohol and you have drunk yourself into a stupor. Now's your opportunity. Come to Jesus. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. And he will give you a new start in life. Whatever your behavior is that's bad, you know what it is. Maybe others have no idea. Whatever is concealed in your life that you know is controlling you, bring it to Jesus right now. Thank you, Jesus, for touching people. Thank you for hearing the cries of men and women whose lives have been ravaged and wrecked by sin. Just admit to God you're a sinner and thank Jesus for dying for you in your place on the cross. Say, thank you, Jesus. Come into my life. Cleanse me of my sin. Make me a child of yours. In Jesus' name. If you have just received Jesus as your Savior, write to me and let me know what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.